I could go into all sorts of theory and tangents, but my goal today is to give you specific nuts, nuts and bolts, right? Specific actions and strategies for what I think are the most important aspects of lifting for novices, for beginners. And if you don't think you're a beginner because you've been going to the gym for many years, um, watch through the training. And then if there's any piece of this missing from the way you train today, you're a beginner. So that's the theory I'm going to go with. And beginners have a lot of potential ahead of them to get strong, build muscle, improve body composition, improve health. What I want to start with is this statement at the top. Hopefully you guys can see the whiteboard okay. Build strength, muscle will follow. Okay, build strength, muscle will follow. What I see a lot is people get overwhelmed with the amount of programs, all the equipment you can use. You go to the gym and there's a million machines and they don't know what to do. And then they say, well, this uh, influencer or this person I, I appreciate and follow on social media, she looks great. She's toned. She's got the physique I want or the health I want. I'm going to do what she's doing. The problem is she has spent potentially years getting to that point. And what she's doing does not make sense for a beginner. So we're going to use this principle throughout in that our goal is to get stronger. And by getting stronger and more capable and using our full system, our human system, um, naturally, we will develop muscle mass and all the benefits that come with that, the capability, the health, the ability to burn more fat, um, and the, the joint health and so on. Okay, so we're going to start with that principle. The other principle I want to mention is, this is really about training. Okay, and here, I don't know if you can read this, but it says training equals skill. It is not exercise. Okay, there are lots of things in life we do for fun, right? Going out for a bike ride, you might do that for fun. But when we talk about getting stronger, building muscle effectively, and we don't want to be wasting our time doing this, unless we really just enjoy it for its own sake, um, we want to train, right? We want to develop skill over time. It's like playing an instrument or getting good at a, you know, Microsoft Excel or uh, whatever hobby or skill that you've worked at for years. Uh, it's really a matter of practice and improvement over time. So if you feel right now frustrated because you haven't gotten stronger, you haven't developed muscle, right? You feel like going to the gym is a chore. There's no intrinsic um, joy from going to the gym. I was just talking to Becky, one of our attendees today, a uh, former client, and before the call, and she said how like just going to the gym is now becoming a habit, a routine, right? And that's what we want it to be. If you haven't experienced all of that, chances are you are not developing the skill and progressing over time because most people will start to enjoy it as that happens. So we're going to talk about how to do that today. First things first, what do we, how do we get started? All right. I want to address things like schedule, equipment, uh, programming, and then I'm going to tie them into some basic principles. All right. So schedule wise, I highly recommend if you're a beginner, you carve out three days a week. Just keep it simple. Three days a week, full body is ideal. Why? Because as a beginner, you have the ability to work out all your muscle groups within, within less than an hour because the weights are not that heavy and when we talk about programming, you'll see we're not doing seven different exercises in a workout. We're doing three, right? The weights aren't that heavy. And then within less than 48 hours, sometimes as little as 24 hours, you can fully recover and do it again. If you go and, you know, pick out that program that you follow online, that influencer follows, uh, four day, who does a four-day split, right? They might do upper, lower, upper, lower. They might do bench press, squat, um, uh, bench press, squat, overhead press, deadlift, and then they'll repeat the next week. Well, when you think about that, what's happening? You squat on Tuesday, you don't do it again until the next Tuesday. Well, as a beginner, you need more frequency than that. You need to be squatting pretty much every session when you first start because your body can, and that will cause the stimulus and adaptation you need to lift heavier and heavier and heavier each time. And it all comes back to training as a skill and building strength over time. So three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Now here's where I'm gonna put on my little um, no excuses hat. And I'm gonna say that there are many points of what I'm gonna say today where you're, you might have an excuse. And this group, this training, us here, we're about action and implementation. So I want you to get creative and I want you to think about how to, to break down the roadblocks, how to break down the barriers. So if you tell me I can't work out three days a week because of my schedule, I'm gonna say, 
do a time audit of your schedule. Look at how much screen time you have on your phone. Look how much time you stream Netflix. Um, look how much time you spend commuting and look how much time you do other things that are less valuable than your health. Second, if you say that the gym is too far away, okay, really strongly consider a home gym. I'm sorry to say it, but most people have some sort of space for a home gym. And if you don't, I get it, okay? But we're talking about making an investment in your health. And if you have the room or you can carve it out in your house, a home gym is going to solve a lot of other problems like the commute, the convenience, the gym culture, all these things that are problems for some people. So <laughs> that's my diatribe. And it kind of applies to everything in that we don't want to make excuses. We want to figure out how to do it because this is the most effective and quick way to build strength that I'm talking about today. Um, okay, so that's that's schedule. And by the way, if you have questions as we go, put them in the chat in text. And then when we're all done, we'll open it up and answer those. Um, the next thing is equipment. Okay, so humans are really good at inventing tools. Over time, we figure out that certain things are more efficient for the job, the hammer to a nail, right? The most effective tool we found to load up your body with natural movement is the barbell. Now, yes, there are bands. Yes, there are dumbbells. Yes, there are machines. But the barbell is a balanced, stable tool that allows you to lift extremely heavy weight, the heaviest weight possible of any of those tools, do it safely, right, with the right equipment, and actually make progress for what we're intending. Now, let me quickly address the alternatives, right? Dumbbells. Dumbbells are going to be the next best alternative. I've had clients um, start with dumbbells because of a lack of access to the gym or they have a home gym and they don't have a barbell and rack. And you can do that. The problem with dumbbells is a few things. Number one, you'd have to have a whole string of all the dumbbells to actually progress in weight. And even then, when you're going from 10 to 15 to 20, the jumps are too big. And now you need to get micro plates and things like that. Um, the second thing is as dumbbells get heavy, they get very unwieldy and you have to like muscle them into place. And that actually can cause injury and stress on other joints that you don't intend to use. Uh, the third thing is almost invariably when I see people trying to replicate the main barbell movements with dumbbells, their form is not great at all. And it's actually very hard to get good form with dumbbells. It's, it's quite a bit easier with barbells. It takes a little bit of learning and skill, but so does, so does it with dumbbells. And with barbells, you can be consistent over time and lift a lot of weight. Um, the other alternatives are bands and machines. So when I say machines, I'm talking about cable machines. I, I totally am against using the, the big box gym like uh, machines where you're, you're stuck in a fixed range of motion. There may be one or two of those in existence that offers much value. Most of them are not going to be worthwhile compared to free weights, um, but cables can be a good alternative if you don't have another choice. For example, a lat pull-down machine is a good choice uh, when you get to the point where you want to learn pull-ups and chin-ups, but you're not strong enough to do it, for example. Bands are, are good for um, rehab. They're good for um, working up to something that you're very weak in. For example, I, I just mentioned chin-ups and pull-ups. A band is a good way to use with a pull-up bar to work up to it. Um, they're also good for, let's say you can't squat to depth and you're really weak with your squat. Instead of like squatting to a box, which is one way I would do it, you can take a band and stretch it across a power rack and then do the squat. But you're still doing a squat with a barbell. So my point is, I would not recommend using bands for the main movements unless it's your only option, right? And again, we're talking about breaking down excuses. Um, if you are rehabbing, if you're recovering from injury, if your doctor has said not to load a certain way, then, then bands could be an option. Okay, so <laughs> um, barbell, the barbell is the most effective tool. Now, what does that look like? A barbell is typically a seven foot long, six or seven foot long, 45 pound bar. Some are lighter, like for uh, women's barbells, or they even have very light 15 pound barbells. The standard is 45 pounds, which is 20 kilos, and it's loadable with Olympic size plates, which are just plates that have a two inch hole, not, not the ones with the little one inch hole, but the two inch. In addition to this, you just need two other things. You need a rack to put the barbell in and you need a bench to do bench presses. That's the minimum equipment. You could probably invest a couple grand at home and have an entire setup that would last you for the next two years. 
or, and, and the stuff will last you for the rest of your life. I'm just saying before you outgrow it in strength. Um, most gyms do have barbells and racks these days, but some don't. So again, you're going to have to look around. And as part of today's training, I really want you to be taking notes and thinking about each of these things, how you're going to plan them in and take action. So three days a week program using 